Good morning friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel Medical Classes by Dr. Srinidhi Kumar Acharya. Don't uh, forget to subscribe my channel and also please give your valuable comments. So we know that in the last class we have discussed some of the basics and uh, clinically we have seen that which are all cases that you have to consider uh, for the treatment of a shwasa and these are the different causes that we have seen in the last class bronchospasm, fluid pathology. We have to look into the cause, what exactly, which cause is responsible for this particular shwasa and then we have to proceed forward. Now, if you look into Charaksamita, so when he classified different types of shwasas, it is very clear. It is classified according to the severity. That means, he has brought all the conditions of the patient where he is presented the shwasa in a place and later he divided them into according to severity. The most severe conditions may be which includes Arishta Lakshanas and most of the complications, advanced level of uh, complications, so are included under Mahashwasa. Some little less severe cases are considered under Urdhashwasa and still less severe cases are considered under Chinnashwasa, but all the three are considered as Asadhya only. Later one which can be managed by means of uh, some of the treatment continuously that is, uh, that is referred as Tamakashwasa and one which is totally not danger dangerful or dangerous so that is considered as Shudra Shwasa. So according to me it is basically classified on the basis of the severity. In Mahashwasa you find many cases where uh, the complications or Arish Lakshanas are present. When he says Pranashta Jnana Vijnana that means this has crossed the level of uh, lung parenchyma and all. Now it is causing the long term problems and patient is having a problem with the oxygenation and neuronal cells are get affected and as a result patient is having Pranashtajnana Vijjana, okay, the end stage where the respiratory centers are stimulated, especially the expiratory center, in the respiratory center, the expiratory centers are stimulated only when during the end stage of the disease, okay, so that is represented, that's uh, by the words like Durat Vijnayate Brusham and as well as Matta Vrushaba Ivanitam, there will be an expiratory grunts or expiratory striders, okay, so Mahashwasa is most likely to be a most severe form of the Shwasa which cannot be treated because it is a death-like condition. But when you come to the uh, uh, Urdhva Shwasa and as well as Chinna Shwasa, we find some references which, which give some guidelines for the possible management of Shwasa in Ayurveda. Because if you look into Urdhva Shwasa and Chinna Shwasa, some of the important points are mentioned there. Now before that, <coughs> Practically when a patient of Shwasa comes to you, although classics mention many things, now we should note what are the cases that are treatable, okay, and how it is treatable. Now if you take some help of uh, the division which is done in the contemporary medical science, what they say is they divide all the conditions of respiratory difficulty or dyspnea like conditions into two things. Number one is obstructive lung disorders and another one is restrictive lung disorders. Obstructive lung disorders means there is no problem with the lung parenchymal elasticity the problem is only with the entry of the air okay there is some problem for the entry of the air obstruction for the entry of the air it may be in the form of a bronchospasm it may be in the form of some mass occupy mass occupying there or some of the lymph uh, lymph glands or it may be because of some fibrosis or it may be because of some fluid pathologies so or some sputum collections etc so because of that there is the shotho mukha avarodha Okay, there is a avarodha of the mukashrota by means of Sleshma. So all such conditions which are explained that the Sleshma or the mukashrota, this is explained in Urdhashvasa, so can be taken as obstructive lung disorders. Okay, where there is a problem is only with the entry of the air inside. Otherwise lung elasticity, compliance, distensibility, extensibility, everything is fine. But there is some problem with the entry of the air itself. Another set of condition is that there is no obstruction there is no obstruction, but only the problem is there with the uh, lung expansion. That means compliance of the lung is less. Okay, there is reduced distensibility, reduced extensibility, and there is reduced elasticity, and totally the compliance of the lung is less. And such conditions are called as restrictive disorders of the lung. So the same has been explained in Dhirgashwasa also, where he says Shwasasya bahiragayanam dhirga kalam karoti. Patient has got no problem with the inspiration, but the Shwasasya Bahiragamanam, 
that is expiration is quite difficult because compliance of the lung is not up to the mark we, we know that expiration is a passive process expiration is passive process because of elastic recoiling of the lung but that elastic recoiling of the lung itself is damaged or affected and therefore expiration is becoming more and more difficult okay so nacha pratyahara tadaha so therefore so broadly according to this basis which is explained in the urdhva shwasa so we can divide the patients of shwasa into those with obstructive lung disorders where there is shleshma or tamuka shrota is there another is restrictive lung disorder so where patient has got shwasasya bahiragavanam dirghakalam karoti now based on this if you plan some sort of treatment then it may be quite helpful so based on tamaka uh, shwasa we will see the treatment later it is nothing but uh, different types of uh, allergic manifestations okay so okay hypersensitive immunological and allergic type of disorders which is leading to respiratory problems or respiratory difficulty that we'll see later now these two disorders obstructive lung disorders and restricted lung disorders now how to treat and have a approach now two approaches we have number one is this is everything is explained in uh, charak samhita the treatment purpose we have to further divide the patients into two types as charaka explains one is vata dominant patients and another one is kapha dominant patients okay now vata dominant patients are nothing but there is obstruction due to spasm okay he also says that vata dominant patients are also considered as durbala patients and another is kapha dominant patients where these patients are considered as prabala strong and there is a obstruction due to sputum or structural problems or some of the fluids i think you are following me so we are now dealing with the obstructive lung disorders shleshma avurta mukashroto in that charaka again says that such conditions are again of two types number one is obstruction to the flow of the air where the cause is being vata and obstruction to the flow inflow of the air where the cause being kapha he says those where the kapha is the major problem so the vata is the major cause for the obstruction such patients were also considered as durbala patients and where the kapha is the major problem such patients were also considered as sabala patients okay now in this context we can say obstruction is there but cause is vata so that may be obstruction because of the spasm spasm is because of vata prakopa sanganga banga sankocha varta harshana tarpanam sankocha is taking place spasm of the muscles kapha dominant pathology obstruction is there but cause is not spasm something other than the spasm may be the fluid pathologies or may be some other structural problems may be some mass pressing the lumen etc so when we go further the treatment of obstructive lung disorders kapha prabala patients now come to the treatment part obstructive lung disorders we are dealing in that now first we will deal with the kapha prabala patients or which who are also called as sabala patients kapha prabala patients means the problem is related either with the uh, the fluid pathologies or some other masses or some other structural problems etc okay so what we will going to do here snehana first line of treatment is snehana so followed by swedana because we have to remove the kapha so to remove the kapha go for snehana and as well as swedana okay for internal snehana if you can go for lavana tailas like brahat saindavadya lavana or lavana taila so because lavana is a kapha abhishandakara so we have to re remove the kapha from there obstructed kapha okay therefore the internal snehana can be done by brahat saindavadi taila or lavana tailas externally also you can go for abhyanga because it's acting as a <clears throat> again uh, abhyanga by means of lavana taila or brahat saindavadi taila may be also helpful and this will be followed by the swedana and swedana can be done to the chest area neck area sarvang area and you can go for patra uh, pataswedha patrapinda swedha rukshapinda swedha whatever uh, option is beneficial according to the yukti so you can select but it should be mixed with the lavana and if you mix with the nagavalli patra rasa and gojiva patra rasa that is very good okay so this is snehana followed by swedana okay now once snehana and swedana is over then you can go for a sadhya sadhyavamana okay that is quite beneficial we have practically seen that just go for snehana and swedana followed by a sadhyavamana that gives a immediate relief as the kapha has been removed okay so you can go for sadhya vamana by different methods or you can also simply go for vamana pagatrax in the small kids when it is not possible you can go for yashtimadu or vacha the vamana pagatrax so that also do the function of a kapha chedana and kapha will be removed 
and again this can be followed by the inhalational therapies now this will be followed by the further inhalational therapies so inhalation can be done by using different drugs which are having strong aromatic smell or some of the drugs which are having soothing effects okay so usually uh, inhalation can be done by the nilagiri tailas or any drugs which is having strong aromatic smell or haridradi dupa so they are quite beneficial this will be followed by kapha hara dravya prayoga like pipali maricha balachatrubhadra etc now this will be the approach in a patient of obstructive lung disorders with the kapha dominant condition and sabala patient now we go to the next part where the treatment of obstructive lung disorders where vata prabala is there so when i say it is vata prabala means spasm that means obstruction is there child is not able to respire the problem is vata prabala vata prabala refers to there is some spasm of the smooth muscle is a cause okay so this is nothing but the treatment of a bronchospasm now whatever patient you take um, when there is a bronchospasm patient will always have the problem the immediate responsibility is we have to revert back this bronchospasm by one or the other thing unless and until you revert back the bronchospasm the condition will not revive okay so this is a sort of emergency treatment so we should have a proper um, anti spasmodic treatment for this particular purpose okay so now bronchospasm at times may be complete sometimes it may be partial or it, it may be minimal or it may be occasional it may be occasional so we have to now go for anti spasmodic treatment or anti spasm treatment the, uh, you have to revert back the bronchospasm so what best we can do here is a part a complete bronchospasm is always dangerous very rarely occurs okay okay partial and minimum and occasional bronchospasms are seen in allergic conditions there will be occasional bronchospasms or minimal bronchospasm okay now first thing is as it is because of vata so we will go with the basics that is vata hara chikitsa should be followed okay so what is the best thing to follow the vata hara chikitsa that is anulomana chikitsa okay anulomana chikitsa so pratimarga harana eva chikitsa can also your work so you revert back that means you correct the direction of the vata so vata is now moving in the upper direction so we have to correct it to the lower direction you are re uh, redirecting to the lower direction udana should be reverted back to apana vata condition so here because Uh, the one of the symptom which is also explained in shwasa is pranasya vilomatvam the pranavata moves in the river direction it means in the wrong direction opposite direction okay so you go for vata anulomana chikitsa maybe in the form of haritaki hingu vidutakra etc these are the things which are mentioned in kash uh, charak samhita now vata anulomana causes the generalized smooth muscle relaxation or you can say parasympathetic stimulation of the gut smooth muscles okay so therefore trivurt or abhipatkar churna may be helpful in such conditions now what is the emergency treatment to reverse back the bronchospasm this is very important now always bronchospasm require the quick response isn't it we, we as early as possible we have to revert back the bronchospasm otherwise there will be a problem with the oxygenation and all those things on all the complication start and even the patient may die so therefore quick relief is required therefore we have to use some drugs which are very quickly acting like vibhayi vikasi ashukari drugs okay vibhayi vikasi and ashukari gunayukta drugs should be taken here and usually we know that vibhayi vikasi and ashukari drugs which are having these properties are present in some of the visha drugs and as well as upavisha drugs okay so use of visha and other as upavisha drugs or those drugs which are acting by prabha prabhava that should be taken okay now bronchial smooth muscles are get constricted okay so what is the cause and what you have to revert back see simple so when the sympathetic stimulation is there when there is bronchial muse brook muscle constriction is there that is because of sympathetic stimulation okay sympathetic stimulation causes bronchial muscle uh <clears throat> the role of sympathetic stimulation on the bronchial smooth muscles so if the sympathetic action is increased then usually we will have the relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscles okay that is a base so we have to find such drugs which are considered as sympathetic or sympathomimetic in action if you provide a sympathetic or sympathomimetic action drugs then they will have a relaxation action on the smooth muscles and bronchospasm is relieved bronchospasm which is caused by the histamine and mast cells etc will be relieved 
okay so <clears throat> this is one important thing so can you find out some of the sympathetic or sympathomimetic drugs in ayurveda for example vacha drug soma okay uh, ephedrina superba i think okay so this is actually soma sava which commonly we use so these are the drugs which are having sympathetic action so when you give such a drugs sympathetic mimetic drugs or sympathetic drugs they will relax the bronchial smooth muscles and you will have a bronchial relaxation and the spasm is relieved another thing is you can go for anti cholinergic stimulation now we know that sympathetic stimulation will go into cause the relaxation of the smooth muscles of the bronchial tree parasympathetic stimulation will go into cause the constriction of the bronchial smooth muscles okay so when there is parasympathetic action the muscles will be constricted smooth muscles will be constricted so revert back to this to revert back this condition we have to go for anti parasympathetic drugs okay we should have anti parasympathetic drug no anti parasympathetic drugs we have got commonly in the contemporary sense we use the atropine like drugs which is the anti parasympathetic now anti parasympathetic stimulation causes bronco uh, relaxation that means parasympathetic stimulation causes bronchial constriction and if you provide an anti parasympathetic action drugs it will cause the Uh, bronchial muscle relaxation it's quite common okay so it's also called as anti cholinergic treatment anti parasympathetic or anti cholinergic treatment causes the sympathetic stimulation and the bronchial muscles will get relaxed so we have got many drugs atropine containing drugs are present in our science like the thura is there and we can use uh, 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 again uh, the kanaka as well where the thura is present then sutashekar rasa also contains unmatta bija then vaksana by preparations uh, like tuber, um, tribuna kirti rasa etc so they contains actually anti sympath anti cholinergic action they have the anti cholinergic action and they have the drugs which are acting as anti cholinergic so combination of this sympathetic and sympathe mimetic and the anti cholinergic drugs will give a very good effect in reverting back the bronchospasm so combination of sek somasava and combination of kanakasava so they will effectively revert back the condition of course if in case of minimum or partial or in case of occasional um occasional bronchospasm especially in allergic conditions when the patient is exposed to allergy so he will have occasional uh, bronchospasm so that condition this is quite helpful and some other emergency methods which are followed in our sense is inhalational therapy of the same drugs datura haridra shirisha shirisha is a very good mast cell inhibitor okay so now mast cell inhibition itself causes uh, the histamine release and histamine release uh, uh, histamine release will cause a bronchospasm so combination of sympathetic mimetic drugs combination of anti parasympathetic drug and combination of mast cell inhibitors like a combination of uh, soma sava kanaka sava and as well as a uh, shirisha dyarishta or shirisha preparations any of the preparations is a very good combination combination to revert back the bronchospasm okay so now another is the tone of the bronchial muscle is also maintained now tone of the muscle is also very important if the tone of the muscle is too tight hypertonic then also it is dangerous hypertonic then also it is dangerous you have to maintain the tone of the bronchial smooth muscles also um, <coughs> uh, of course the some of the other skeletal muscles bronchial smooth muscles we cannot do anything uh, other skeletal muscles tone is also very important to maintain the patency of the tract okay in the upper part of the pharynx larynx etc so there we have to go uh, go for n1 stimulator drugs that means n1 uh, receptor stimulation like for example vacha kupilu etc so they puga vacha kupilu tambula so actually they all contains nicotine to some extent that, that nicotine is, nicotine is basically increases the skeletal muscle tone it acts on the n1 receptors n1 receptors so this may be acetylcholine n1 receptor so therefore it is quite beneficial so combination of these four drugs may be to some extent i am not claiming to some extent practically we have seen helpful in partial or minimum bronchial spasms to revert back the condition now what is the treatment to prevent the recurrent spasm this is usually occurs in allergic disorders and all recurrent spasms will be there so to reduce the frequent fluctuation of the vata uh, spasm is always because of vata so to reduce the frequent fluctuation of the vata then soothing and snehana treatment should be given ojo vardhakara treatment should be given and drugs which reduce the sensitivity of the mucosa especially in allergy like conditions rahifena badrik vata shati and some of the sugandha dravyas can be given 
some of the kshara prayoga can be done okay arka kshara yava kshara and tankana kshara that can be also done and uh, kshara maintains the ph etc then mutra prayoga because tikshna and ushna drugs so this also helps to remove the obstruction if it is kapha condition to keep the tract aja mutra prayoga has been mentioned in ulbaka chikitsa also by kashyapa now variants of obstructive lung disease sometimes sometimes this obstructive lung disorders uh, they come with some of the variations okay so when there is association of vata and pitta now usually the obstructive lung disorders can occur because of vata or because of kapha sometime obstruction due to vata like spasm so that will be associated with the pitta also so when this spasm of the smooth muscles is associated with pitta then that condition is basically called as tamakashwasa this is mentioned in uh, charak samhita very clearly okay in case of tamakashwasa there is vata pitta uh, combinations will be there okay so that leads to tamakashwasa so this is basically because of uh, uh, some of the atopic or non atopic allergy conditions okay so a obstructive lung disease only but it is recurrent and reversible rapidly okay so in such conditions it is better to go for virochana pak drugs or some virechanas therefore it is called tamaketu virechana virochana pak drugs or virechana should be planned okay and shwasa is also called as amashaya samudbhavya pitta sthana samudbhavya okay so therefore this particular treatment for pitta hara along with vata hara treatment you have to also plan the pitta hara treatment now we come to the last part that is obstructive uh, lung disorder is over now come to the restrictive lung disorders in case of the restrictive lung disorders there is no problem with the obstruction there is no obstruction at all only restriction there is problem is expiration is more difficult because the elastic recoiling nature or lung capacities and lung volumes are get affected because compliance of the lung is reduced okay so that means inside the lung the space is reduced the bucket handle movement the oblique movement of the ribs they are all get affected because of various reasons neuromuscular problems or some other causes so now to increase the space inside the thoracic cavity the only thing is we have to increase the space by different method so if you want to increase the space the compliance of the lung has to be increased isn't it its extensibility and distance distensibility should be increased so akasha mahabhuta should be increased inside the lung cavity and uh, so this is best done by different uh, pranayama methods okay different pranayama method is quite beneficial so these pranayama methods helps to increase the lung volume and as well as helps to increase the lung capacities vital lung capacity total lung capacity inspiratory reserve volume respiratory reserve volume so that is done by that can be to some extent achieved by means of regular practice of pranayamas number one number two you can go for chest physiotherapy you can go for chest physiotherapy by Uh, some of the brahmana tailas etc okay now breathing exercise different types of spirometric examination we know that okay different types of breathing exercise spirometric examination is used to assess the restrictive lung disorders so bhastrika pranayama kapalabhati etc can be done if there's a fluid pathology yes if the fluid pathology is causing this restriction sometime then you have to go for diuretics now punarnava gokshura is there and some other punarava rishta some other diuretics mutral drugs are mentioned so that can be given if there is some right heart pathology leading to restrictive uh, restrictive uh, uh, lung disorders then shwasakutta rasa or punarava mandura arjuna rishta can be given sometimes neuromuscular problems may be the cause okay respiratory muscles are not moving the accessory muscles of the respiration they are undergoing atrophy or moving not total moving then you can go for neuromuscular problems so neuromuscular problem treatment can be given with the respiratory muscles like agnitundi rasa which increase the Uh, contraction and relaxation of the skeletal smooth muscles agni tundi kupilu vishamushtivati ekanga virasa <coughs> so these are some of the drugs which can be tried in case of restrictive disorders of the lung so this is all about the treatment of shwasa in ayurveda especially in case of children of course this is what i used to practice there are so many limitations okay only in minimum and as well as a occasional bronchospasm can be confidently managed by ayurvedic treatment at present scenario uh, but when there is a complete obstruction of the bronchial smooth muscles uh, so we have got uh, limitations it's our limitations we cannot do that we need to take the help of other sciences also to some extent but occasionally if it is because of allergies or if it is because of recurrent coughing the spasm is initiated such conditions these drugs are more than enough to control them Okay thank you very much please don't forget to subscribe my channel and also please give your valuable comments thank you we will meet again in another class